Grayson and I played a lot of games this year. We played your only move is kill process. Oh, I love robot! <laughs> We played Rit- <laughs> We played Risk of- We played Risk of Rain 2 Jackbox was fun. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 27. That line sucked. You know what else sucked? 9, 11. <laughs> we played Lethal Company. Oh, they take it! Take it! <laughs> Team Fortress 2 got an update, kinda not really. Oh! When I was little, my brother and I used to be superheroes. I had lightning powers and super speed, and we had a secret HQ in our front yard. My house served as the final resting place for an uncountable sum of bad guys. But since then, I hadn't felt that feeling of childlike, wonderful imagination until I played the little gator game. Playing through this game was some of the most wholesome, hilarious, plain fun I've been lucky enough to experience through video games, and I recommend it to everyone. The original Stanley Parable, since its release, has been regarded by many as the cornerstone of satirical comedy games, surprising players by challenging the linear narrative of a typical story-driven game and introducing a the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe is a remake of the original game, which added a variety of content. I, along with many others, but luckily, the devs knocked it out of the park. The content in Ultra Deluxe not only manages to maintain and even improve the quality of humor that we had come to expect, but it also blends a virtuoso composition that transcends the conventional boundaries of This digital masterpiece deftly navigates the labyrinth of narrative possibilities, inviting players to traverse the Unparalleled in the realm of interaction. This game is BS. Just awful. When I played Uncharted 4, I was having fun. Killing bad guys and climbing and cracking jokes. Being Nathan Drake was Nathan great, but it wasn't until this moment in the game that I was hooked. As soon as I saw Elena's face, I knew that she knew that Nathan didn't know not to lie to her because she knows. That's how you tell a story. Compared to all the games on this list, Ultra Kill is like that one drunk uncle drunk at the family reunion who randomly shouts Eddie Murphy quotes. Kinda weird and out of pace with everyone else, but he still belongs there and he's a heck of a lot of fun if you can keep up with him. Hey wait, I really like Ultra Kill. Shut up, it's my turn! The best way I can think of to explain how Ultra Kill plays is a low poly Doom Eternal on crack. In Doom, you're running around the level with reckless abandon, facing demons head-on, and blasting them using your arsenal of big guns. In Ultra Kill, you're moving at Mach 10 with about a dozen different methods of flight. You heal from your enemy's blood, so you're constantly getting in their faces. You have a similar arsenal, except each weapon has an alternate fire and multiple variations, all of which have unique interactions with both enemies and other variations, which allows you to chain some absurd combos and forces you to quickly and constantly switch your playstyle in order to deal the most damage possible. Now, take all of these interactions and blend them with quick, satisfying movement and levels full of unique enemies and challenging bosses, and we end up with one of the most fast-paced, combat-tech-packed shooters I've ever played. Uh-oh, I don't think Anders was happy about not getting to talk about Ultra Kill. Judgment! 
Rock, rock and stone. And stone. Mm. Rock and stone to the bone. Rock and stone. Rock, rock and never and gets old. Stone. Rock and stone to the bone. We are unbreakable. I am the smartest guy ever, and I know this because I beat Tunic, which is the smartest game ever. My whole playthrough of Tunic was filled with wonder. The game is the definition of an adventure. Every inch of the map is filled with secrets and puzzles that are so clever they had me go, aha, or oh. Hmm. Every single time. Really? Every time? Yep. Every time. When I played Batman, I was like, BAM! Kick! Kapow! The combat in this game is so satisfying. And when I was in the city, grappling around, I was like, Wee! Whoosh! And when I was driving in the bat car, I was like, Vroom! Crash! I don't know why, but the movement in this game is so addicting, and it really makes you feel like Batman. 10 out of 10. You need to move a little faster than that, son. Speed is life. Remember when I said Tunic was the smartest game ever? And that I was the smartest guy ever because I beat it? Well, actually, Return of the Obra Dinn is the smartest game ever. And I'm the dumbest guy ever because I didn't realize you could put names in the book until I was at the third to last chapter. In Red Dead Redemption 2, you play as a bad cowboy who shoots people, and a gang of bad cowboys who also shoot people. The characters are probably the biggest reason that the story in this game is one of the best of all time. And then add the fact that it's played in an open world that's filled with life and things to do, and you end up with one heck of a game. Elden, Elden, Of all the games we played this year, we spent the most time by far in Elden Ring, with over 100 hours on a single save. And it never got old either. There's so much variety in both the enemies and the ways to kill them. Between the stellar boss fights are these beautiful vistas of a land once great, now in ruins. The music, the storytelling, the bosses, the combat, the art, the funny skull spell. Elden Ring deserves its title of Game of the Year. <laughs>